Hello friends I am Ardhindu De and you are watching Edis English Literature Today we are focusing on development of English essays from Francis Bacon to Joseph Addison I am going to share what happens in between these two great writers we should carry to the different stages of its development in English particularly from Francis Bacon to Joseph Addison we are going to discuss in between 100 years through the intimate and personal thought of Abraham Cowley after Francis Bacon translation of the Bible and religio medici character writers of the 17th century and obviously restoration prose but first what is an essay. An essay is a short composition in prose. Sainsbury calls it a work of prose arts. Dr. Johnson defines it as a loose sally of the mind, an irregular undigested piece, not a regular and orderly performances. There are various types of essay, personal, giving author's own experiences, impressions and reactions, aphoristic, giving impersonal views, impersonal reflections on wisdom and philosophy, periodical, uh, that is published in dailies or weekly basis or monthly basis. Uh, detailing contemporary social or political problems. To trace the history of English essay, we shall have to go back to the Elizabethan age, the miscellaneous work of the few university wits like Lily, Green, Lodge and Nasse has some traces of novel. It was also the first anticipation of the essay. Apology for Poetry of Sir Philip Sidney has a semblance of essay though in uncertain style. In the truest modern sense, uh, Michel de Montaigne, French writer, introduced the essay as a literary form. His essays which range over a wide variety of topics are characterized by a discursive style, a lively conversational tone and the use of numerous quotations from the classical writers. The essay in its real form came into existence in England in 1597 with the publication of a short series of essays by Francis Bacon. There is in his essays aphoristic touch sentence that are toiling with wisdom and astute expediency. After Bacon, Sir William Cornwallis tried to write in the aphoristic style, but he failed to reach the heights. He had little in common with Bacon. Like Montaigne, Wallace's essays they focus on self-analysis and self-improvement later ben johnson the great poet and dramatist was also a renowned critic of his time his prose work is a a, a kind of uh, first rate of criticism we can say it the most important name after bacon in the realm of his writing is that of abraham cowley he is an important connecting link between Bacon and Addison. The defects of Bacon were remedied somewhat by Cowley. While Bacon's essays are aphoristic and impersonal, Cowley's essays have intimate touches and personal thought which characterizes the true essay. Cowley cultivated a form of essay more intimate and confidential, though less profound, less rightly and philosophical than the Baconian style, 
but Cowley's prose style has been highly praised from his own day to the present for its naturalness, grace and simplicity. After Abraham Cowley comes the age of modern English prose, uh, which is modern in that sense that uh, the admixture of impersonal and personal were possible. However, much had transferred in the field of essay between Bacon and Cowley before the modern prose came into existence. A host of character writers emerged on the literary scene whose contribution to the English essay is no less important. Therefore, it does deserve a bright mention here. I will carry out a discussion on that topic too. I will also mention two things. One is the translation of the Bible and another is religio medici. Sir Thomas Brown, another important name in the history of essay writing, has religio medici, a classical uh, scientific account in prose. Similarly, Sonodas and Stedley in the prose of is the prose of Sir Thomas Brown, the physician and semi-scientific investigator. His reduction of worldly phenomena of symbols of mystical truth is best seen in religio medici uh, which can be translated as religion of a doctor probably written in 1635 the outstanding prose works of the renaissance are not so numerous as those of the later ages but the great translation of the bible is notable An another thing that i like to mention it is also called King James Bible or Authorized Version published in 1611. It is a significant work because it was the culmination of two centuries of effort to produce the best English translation of the original texts and also because its vocabulary, imagery and rhythms that has influenced writers particularly essayists of English in all lands ever since. Great uh, Greek philosopher and teacher Theophrastus, with the intention of instructing and amusing his students of rhetoric, wrote character. Theophrastus' technique was to explore the character through his personal deeds and speeches. His work was introduced to Europe during the Renaissance time. He was the first character writer, admiring his wit and insight into human feelings. A number of contemporary writers imitated his example. They included in France, Jean de la Breer, and in England, Joseph Hall, Sir Thomas Overbury, John Arlyle, and Samuel Butler. They produced a type of character sketch that was popular in 17th century England and France that I have just told you. Their writings stemmed from a series of character sketches. Hall wrote in a satirical and pungent style. Overbury wrote in a hopelessly artificial style. Instead of being content with the superficiality of the character like Overbury, Arley tried to penetrate into the depths of the character. Overbury's character sketches are the direct forerunners to Sir Roger and the whole group of personal belonging to the spectator club that we will meet in Joseph Edison's periodicals. The restoration marks the beginning of modern prose. The spread of the spirit of common sense and of the critical temper of mind. The love of definiteness and clarity and of the hatred of the pedantic and obscure have contributed to the development of English prose. The growing interest, the growing interest 
in rationalism and the advancement of science. Various political parties and groups, the coffee houses, the drawing rooms and many other factors contributed to the evolution of modern prose during the restoration period. There are few great names in this group. John Dryden. He was one of the greatest prose writers of this period. No single item of Dryden's prose work is of very great length, but in his essay of dramatic poesy, uh, in his numerous dedicatory epistles and prefaces, and in scanty stock of his surviving letters, we have a prose corpus of some magnitude. His essay of dramatic poesy is a major piece of literary criticism in the language. His other works include essay on satire, essay on epic poetry and preface to fables. Dryden's prose indeed marks a definite progress in the development of language, particularly essay writing. It is the first example of modern English prose, we can say. Dryden has been given the credit of inaugurating the new era of English prose. He has also been considered as the father of English prose. The next in the notable series we can say John Bunyan. He is recognized as a master of allegorical prose. The Pilgrim's Progress is Bunyan's masterpiece. It is allegorical prose. It explores gender studies. Gender studies means attitudes towards women. The writer's use of metaphorical and symbolic language is added styles uh, to the essay formats that we will meet in the later course of essays. The notable another writer is John Pepys. The diary of Sir John Pepys, notably you have heard of this, is remarkable for the unaffected naturalness of style and narrative skill and it provides an interesting view of the life of restoration London. Halifax adopts the manner and attitude of the typical man of the world, a moderation of statement, a cool and agreeably acid humor and a style devoid of flourishes. Sir William Temple, another great writer, shows some skill in the handling of melodious and rhythmic prose. John Locke's prose was also clear, earnest and without ornament, though it lacks the balance in its sentences which gives Bunyan style its charm. But Locke's essay on the human understanding is one of the most important work of English philosophy. It gave a new direction uh, to thought not only in English but in other countries of Europe too. Jeremy Collier, uh, particularly his writing, sought view of the immorality and profaneness of the English stage is written uh, in a kind of a freestyle. Thomas Spratt wrote on the newly formed Royal Society in a close, naked and natural way of speaking. Added to that, there was a proliferation of scientific writings at this time. The numerous volumes which appeared under the title of the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society launched in March 1665 by Henry Oldenburg did much to pave the way for scientific matter-of-fact prose a kind of analytical prose or a kind of scientific journal writing in essay format. Though the prose writings of restoration are not great in bulk, it shows a profound change in style. It acquires a general utility and performances. It is smoothened and strengthened, simplified and harmonized. This is the age of average prose and it prepares the way for the works of Swift and Addison in the later half of the century. 
So I think this little bit of lecture on the topic of development of English essay from Bacon to Addison will definitely benefit you. And again, if you have any questions, any queries, just drop a comment. I will try my best to give some explanation. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.